The annual spectacle of technical toys is done for another year. CES, which supposedly stands for Consumer Electronics Show, but actually stands for Crap Extraneous to Survival. Listen, most of the tech trotted out as either masturbation projects from geeks enamored with gadgets or high-priced toys for idiots with too much money. But hey, it's fun to look at. So here's a few that caught my lidless eye. Sensor Wake is an alarm clock with a twist. Instead of using a radio or a buzzer to rouse you from slumber, it uses pre-programmed smells, as opposed to the smells you currently wake up to once you lift the covers. <laughs> Before bed, you set the alarm and insert your choice of scent capsule, and according to the brochure, in the morning the device gently wakes you up in less than two minutes with the power of smell. Among the choice of scents are the usual artificial fragrances found in bathroom deodorizers, plus chocolate, peppermint, espresso, croissant, coffee, peach, and even the smell of dollars, which in Canada is currently only 72% effective. <coughs> but here's a problem. Science shows that when we sleep, our sense of smell shuts down. That's how we can remain unscathed by a Dutch oven and why we need smoke detectors. If something as alarming as the smell of your house on fire won't wake you up, what the hell good is peppermint? The company's founder says that the device gets around that by using heavy concentrations of smell, which sounds about as pleasant as waking up in a Camaro with three douchebags doused in Axe body spray. And don't pleasant, soothing smells help you to sleep, not wake you up? Face it, the only thing that can get someone hopping out of bed quickly is the smell of something alarming, which ain't peach unless you have a fear of Snapple. Smells that may work, Shart, Chlamydia, NASCAR fans, and Walmart. For those, unlike me, who make the mistake of inviting people into their homes, the Soma Bar robotic bartender can help you offer a diverse range of mixed drinks to the parasites drinking your booze. Like your guests, the Soma Bar comes preloaded. It has hundreds of recipes in its programming. It mixes your choice of ingredients with bitters to make a perfect cocktail in about 10 seconds. It's not just for parties, the Soma Bar is also a great choice for someone who likes to drink alone at home, such as an alcoholic. And the big advantage? You don't have to show cleavage to get your drinks faster. Wearable tech is the new big thing, at least until one trip through the laundry. Possibly the smallest bit of new wearable tech is the Octoring, which is not to be confused with an Octoroon, which is an outdated term for someone who is one-eighth black. Octoring lets you keep your phone in your pocket when answering calls. The ring obviously sits on your finger, and the manufacturer recommends that to avoid losing it, it should be removed during rectal self-exams. The ring vibrates to let you know you have a call, which means you shouldn't wear it while playing Operation. To answer the call, you press a button on the ring, then cup your hand over your ear and talk as you would with a regular phone. The benefits? The ring allows you to fake calls to break away from crappy conversations without your phone's screen being visible to show you're lying. And the ring recharges in 30 minutes through a micro USB port, eliminating the need to memorize an oath. And depending what finger you wear it on, you may be able to send a message while receiving one. The downside, when you're using it, you look like you're always getting bad news. Oh no! Another downside, you run the risk of people asking you why you're doing an impression of Laugh-In's Gary Owens. But not to worry, most of those people are dead. Like Gary Owens. Apple and Google are reportedly working on versions of the ring, so eventually a telephone ring will become common. But until then, early adopters are likely to be men who like to show off how important and high-end they are in public to mask the fact they have less in the bank than a kid with a paper route. Here's an interesting item, Digitsoul Smart Shoes, which are Bluetooth-enabled footwear that automatically warm up your toes, track your daily activity, and tighten or loosen based on your preferences, controlled by your smartphone. The price? 450 bucks. Higher once Michael Jordan gets hold of them. The shoes are available as pumps, heels, or sneakers, none of which are cold-weather footwear, so apparently nobody's asked the most obvious question. If your feet are cold in winter, why aren't you wearing a pair of boots? Put on some thicker socks. And why do you need a smartphone to loosen or tighten your laces when you could just bend down? What the fuck's wrong with people? And here's the absolute worst product from CES 2016. I had to read this three times before I believed it. Remember Kodak, the film giant that went out of business? Well, they've announced plans to launch a new Super 8 Cine camera using analog and digital technology. I figured, considering people can shoot 4K with their phones, this has got to be some big step in recording technology. And it is a big step. Backwards. The cleverly named Kodak Super 8 camera actually records on Super 8 film, the kind that comes in expensive cartridges that run three minutes and cost a fortune to process and only then see if what you shot was any good. The digital technology they mentioned? An LCD viewfinder. 
and the price between $400 and $800. Uh, what? This is the equivalent of somebody offering a chamber pot that plays MIDI files. What's next for Kodak? A wearable VHS player? Kodak emerged from bankruptcy protection in 2013. I think it's gonna be a round trip.